with an eventual goal of establishing long-term exploration of the Moon and preparing for human exploration of Mars, NASA's Artemis program is a big step towards the world's dreams of intergalactic transportation and colonies across planets. Of course, it's not quite a guarantee or promise towards either of those anytime soon, although it's a generational leap towards something big. To many, the last Artemis-sized space exploration undertaking would have been the Apollo program, which had most famously taken three astronauts to the moon in 1969. The issue comparing Artemis and Apollo lies in the changes in the 52 years since, both technological and political, leading Artemis's final goals to be quite different from Apollo's. While they both consisted primarily of taking humans to the moon, that was about it for Apollo. And while that's more than an astonishing achievement, especially for 1969, it's nothing compared to Artemis's goals. The difference in the two programs can be seen across the 1961 quote from President Kennedy and a 2020 quote from NASA. President Kennedy famously said, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. And NASA's? A plan of establishing long-term exploration of Earth's nearest neighbor and preparing for human exploration of Mars. Both lines are without a doubt incredibly aspirational, although there's something that brings a childlike wonder to NASA's goal. Knowing that NASA has goals to establish some form of national base on the Moon, then to use that knowledge to explore Mars is incredible. But again, it's important not to understate how revolutionary Apollo was either. It just seems slightly less impressive to many thanks to Artemis's larger scope and Apollo's more than 50-year gap. Nonetheless, it should be pretty easy to see, on the surface, that Artemis is very different from Apollo. However, there are a few more differences hidden underneath the surface. So let's get into it with the first one, the reasoning behind returning to space. Let's just say things have changed a little bit. That would include the space race. Starting with the United States announcement of a satellite launch in 1955, the Soviet Union responded, and things took off. The USSR successfully launched the first artificial satellite in 1957, sent the first human into space in 1961, and the US absolutely freaked out. As the instigator, it was not good for the United States to be falling behind in the race that it technically started. So President Kennedy did what any person would do in the situation, launch what became a $280 billion rush to put the first man on the moon. At this time, if NASA wanted 4.4% of the government's total budget for something space-related, they got it if it put America closer to beating the Soviets. Things are different now. There are more than a few reasons behind Artemis, with NASA attributing three major ones, discovery, economic opportunity, and inspiration for a new generation. There's much less of a geopolitical aspect backing up creating a brand new space program, meaning that it's a lot more of why not. Things have just sort of fallen into place for Artemis to exist. NASA hasn't done anything revolutionary relating to the moon in half a century. The public interest is creeping up and billionaires like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are ready to pour billions into private programs of their own. These private options range from launchers, reusable vehicles, landers, and anything that brings us closer to the Moon and Mars. Speaking of which, there lies the second major difference, the program's final goal. After all, America's plan for Apollo was to beat the Soviets and send the first man to the Moon. That was it, just one up Soviet Russia. Artemis is a bit more ambitious if you haven't guessed already. Instead of focusing primarily on geopolitics, NASA is instead looking into helping all of Earth. With threats of overpopulation, starvation, climate change, and so much more, people have increasingly looked at the potential solutions space offers. So, what's closer than Mars? The correct answer is the Moon. Through the Artemis program, NASA plans to revitalize the craze for space and create a pathway to establish Moon and Mars settlements. Something lasting is presented by Artemis, an important aspect that Apollo lacked. Sure, the states will forever be the first to send a man to the moon, although nothing will really come from that. Artemis, though? The Phase 1 funding requirements are literally a list of their own. We're looking at the Orion capsule, the Super Heavy Lift Space Launch System, brand new lunar suits, 
new methods of exploring space, and a lunar discovery and exploration program. Going further, NASA plans for colonies, lunar infrastructure, an entire base camp, the Gateway Space Station, robotic missions, and so much more. As for all of Apollo, it's definitely not lacking, but it focused on four major physical funding categories. Spacecraft, launch vehicles, robotic lunar programs, and Project Gemini. Yet again, this doesn't mean that Apollo wasn't impressive or absolutely incredible. We're just saying that Artemis is looking towards so much more. All of this so much more is possible thanks to the third difference, over 50 years of technology upgrades. Of course, we can start with the obvious, the Orion capsule, the space launch system, SpaceX's Starship, brand new spacesuits, and the HLS are all well-known new technologies. None of these were possible in the 60s, and it's not too surprising why. New materials, fuel types, launch mechanisms, engineering methods, and much more have made it much easier to launch a program like this, with improved aspects across the board. However, that board is pretty big. Take Orion. Our modern-day replacement to the Apollo Command Module is much stronger, less defective, and can be reused up to 10 times. It's complete with new solar-powered lithium-ion batteries, which allow for much longer trips, and has just 60 mechanical switches alongside a 1,000-fold increase in computing power. There are also new GPS systems, cameras, and docking systems, all of which NASA engineers have developed to make Artemis missions just that much more robust. With this tech, Artemis places itself even further away from Apollo. What was previously limited by moon launches is now designed to explore the lunar surface, return to Earth, visit Mars, and be redesigned for more expeditions. Alongside this ability for future expansion, it'll help Artemis accomplish our last significant difference, the program's missions. The Artemis program currently has four planned missions by March 2026, with it having two missions before the third one and its lunar landing. On the other hand, Apollo had 18 missions, with 10 devoted as a build-up to the launch of Apollo 11's moon landing team. We currently have the benefit of hindsight, with NASA obviously knowing how they made it to the moon in the first place. However, we're still starting off the program with Artemis 1, which will use the Block 1 version of NASA's space launch system. This vehicle, made of a core stage and two solid rocket boosters, will reuse four space shuttle engines to launch into orbit sometime in late December 2021. While Artemis 1 originally had plans to shoot around the moon, NASA settled with a mission to test the viability of sending people aboard the SLS. In September 2023, Artemis 2 will launch with three NASA astronauts and one Canadian Space Agency astronaut. This mission will fly by the moon before returning to Earth to analyze the SLS data. As for Artemis 3, this September 2024 launch will take four people around the moon, with two astronauts landing on the moon. This mission will take SpaceX Starship to the lunar surface. While that's pretty simple, Apollo was anything but. After all, Apollo was a culmination of NASA's previous Mercury program and Gemini program. Still, it took three AS series launches without any crew, five crewed Apollo launches, and three unmanned Saturn flights before Apollo 11 launched. Afterward, a total of five other landers made it to the surface before the program was closed. As for Artemis, there's so much more in the works. Remember, these first launches are NASA's baby steps toward establishing a permanent presence on Mars. If NASA improves on the Apollo program's success rate, then we will, without a doubt, get to places quickly. Include Blue Origin hopefully ending the lawsuit against NASA and SpaceX, and you can imagine rapid innovation with NASA's partnerships and the safety that the agency has become synonymous with. Toss in a Mars trip, and Artemis really has the making to not only become Gen Z Apollo, but its own comparison. And knowing that, what do you think? Will the Artemis program bring the world back to the moon by 2024? Or will we be faced with setbacks and delays? Do you think the over 50-year gap since Apollo has affected NASA's ability to commit to space? Will Jeff Bezos ever stop suing SpaceX because NASA likes their products? Let us know your opinions in the comments below, and make sure to check back for more news leading up to NASA returning to the moon.